are you? For what? Well, to go, uh, because I just got in, and if you would be about 15 minutes late, I would be about the happiest woman in the world. Actually, I was calling to tell you that I'm leaving now, but that I'll be a little late. Oh, you are a thoughtful and considerate man. I wanted to pick up something for the baby, but it shouldn't take too long. Oh, what a nice idea. It can be from both of us, if you like. Well, thank you, I would. Hey, listen, I'll be waiting on the stoop uh, when you get here, okay? Great. I haven't seen Jack's place, I must say. I'm sort of curious. Oh, you'll really like it. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to the whole evening. Uh, it'll be really fun. See you later, okay? Bye-bye. Isn't Tom O'Brien? And pleased with himself as ever. Not for much longer, Tommy Bio. Not for much longer. It. For large and for small, buying direct, it's yours for fourteen ninety. I can smooth away. All now. Elia, they said you might be asleep. Oh, father, father, come in, come in, please. I'm so glad. I've been by you. several times before, but never at the right moment. You're here now, father. I've been through a terrible time. Yes, I know. I'm awfully sorry to hear about all this. It's just that it was Pat, and I think that's what makes it so awful, and... Now, Delia, don't let yourself get upset, because if you do, I'll have to leave. No. No, I want you to tell me what to do. Okay, uh, Patty was acting strange, and we had this tremendous argument right before bedtime, and he ran out of the house, and then I ran out after him. I couldn't find him anywhere, though. I looked everywhere for him. Finally, though, when I did find him, it was like he was a different person, and he kept on trying to get away from me. And then he pushed me. What? And I got hurt. Pat didn't mean to harm you. Surely you know that. No, it's not being hurt. That, that's not the thing that matters to me. It's just that Pat was acting so funny, and nothing that I, that I did seemed to be right at all. Well, I know Maeve is certainly worried about him. He hasn't been looking well lately. Father, it just gets worse the, the more I try to help him. It, it just gets worse. And, Father, I'm so scared. I think he's going to leave me. Has he said anything about leaving, Delia? No, but you see, it's, it's like he's not in charge of himself anymore. Father, I feel like he's not even there anymore, and that scares me to death because I feel like I'm all alone. No, that's not so. You have your family, and you can come to me whenever you want. No, I can't. Well, what do you mean? No, I think you know what I mean. There isn't ever a time when I won't welcome you. Father, how can you say that to me when you disapprove of everything that I've done? And look, I know you disapprove of my not telling Pat that I had the miscarriage before we got married. I know that. Well, you should have told Pat the truth then. I think you should tell him now. But that doesn't mean I'm not your friend, Delia. If I were to tell him, he would leave me. Even if what you fear most would have happened. No, it wouldn't be all right. I know it wouldn't be all right. Delia. Father, I have dreams. I have terrible dreams. I have, I have nightmares. I... I I keep on thinking that, that, that Patty's going to run away from me and he's going to run off with fate. Don't you understand that all those exaggerated fears are just reflections of your own insecurities? 
they are? When we're insecure and afraid, we begin to imagine all kinds of horrible things, none of which really ever happen. Father, do you think that I'm an, um, an insecure person? Well, right at this moment, yes. Do you think that's why I'm scared all the time? Yes. And in my opinion, it's why you cling so to Pat and the Ryans. Okay, well then, if I'm, I'm scared all the time, and I have these bad dreams, and I get very mad, and I get depressed all the time, and I keep on making scenes, and I know the thing that Pat hates the most is when I make scenes, uh, well, do, you, do you think that there's something wrong with me? Well, I, I don't know. But if you're so very distressed, wouldn't it possibly be a good idea to talk to one of the staff psychiatrists? Roger said the same thing to me, or something like that. I don't know, maybe he didn't, maybe I just dropped the whole thing. I don't understand. And neither do I. Father, I've been hearing voices. That means I'm crazy, doesn't it? Well, you've had a head injury. Surely some of what you're feeling could be associated with that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, they say if you, if you think that you're crazy, that probably means that you're not crazy at all. Oh, no, no, maybe it's the other way around. Uh, Father, please, you've got to tell me, is Patty going to leave me? Father, am I losing my mind? Father, please, you've got to tell me, you've got to tell me what's going to happen to me, please. Oh, it's about time you got here. We've been ready for at least two minutes. And we've been looking forward to this all day long. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Paid, paid half. Oh, you shouldn't have. She'll love it. Holy St. Patrick, will you look who's here now? You don't say that often, do you? Oh, uh -huh, you're yeah. a fierce man, Tom Desmond, a fierce man to criticize my way of speaking. You ignore him, otherwise it'll go on like this all night. <laughs> Holy St. Patrick. Say, can I take your coat? Oh, you sure can. Thank you. <sighs> Thanks. Mary! Mm -hmm. Hey, the place looks so nice. Well, with a new tablecloth and a chair or two. Oh. Did she, uh, she get a pretty nice job, didn't she? I mean, not that it wasn't all right before. <laughs> Only there's, uh, there's something missing. Or someone, I should say. Oh, Ryan has a little cold. She was out most of the day, day so we uh, took her down to Mrs. Steiner's in the apartment below. That way, we can scream and carry on without disturbing her. And vice versa. Uh, but uh, we're planning to take you down after dinner to uh, show her off. That'll be the high point. Only, uh, where do you keep her when she's here? Oh, in the bureau drawer of Matt. Really? <laughs> and in the playpen most of the day. But in another week or two, she's going to have a room all her own. Right through there. Where? <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a room on the other side of that wall. Uh -huh. that I've arranged to rent it, and we're going to just break through. Oh, that's wonderful. Just as long as there's a door that closes. <laughs> well, a girl has a right to a little privacy. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe that you're... You're really married again, so settled and happy. Mm. Believe it, because it's true. We haven't had a fight since breakfast. <laughs> ah, which is the new indoor record for us. <laughs> is he stubborn? Holy St. Patrick. I won't even bother to answer that now. Can I get you a drink? Hmm? Hey, how about a little Irish in honor of the honeymoon? You got it. Hmm? The same. Ah. Um, tell me, mm -hmm. how do you manage Ryan with both of you working? We share. Uh, <laughs> Jack would rather watch Ryan than write any time. As for me, well, if I could just find a new job with fewer hours so that I could spend more time with Ryan, life would be totally perfect. What about Frank? Couldn't he help get you something with the city? Uh, old straight arrow hustle a municipal job for a relative? You don't know him. Besides, with uh, Ray Woodard touting him for higher office, even if there was something, he wouldn't want to take a chance on nepotism. Which is about right, anyway. Hmm? Thank you. Well, um, didn't Bill Woodard's death change any of that? Well, from what we can gather, uh, the lady is still pretty determined to push Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because that's what her husband wanted. Maybe, uh, maybe she just wants to keep busy. At any rate, it's, uh, it's a lucky break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. As long as uh, there's no hidden purse strings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something for nothing being a rare species and all that kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, Slauncher. Slauncher. Thank you. 
Oh, Faith, you were one of the people we thought most about on the honeymoon. Oh, we saw so many places we knew you'd love. Oh. How are you, anyway? Well, all in all, I'm good. Tom has been helping me to forget how furious I am at dreadful Delia. Good for him. Oh, holy St. Patrick, we forgot the hors d'oeuvres. Oh. We brought back some smoked salmon. Did you now? Uh, let me help. If you know how to peel an onion. Come on. I think I can manage that. <laughs> Well, it's all so domestic, uh -huh. isn't it? Plans for the baby's room. Jack puttering in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. Is it all right? Yes, it is. I like to see you happy. <laughs> Thank you. It is right. You and Jack. I don't know how I ever doubted it. You weren't alone. Well, that's all in the past. Yeah. Do you know what would make me happy now? No, I... If you'd tell me about you. Well, what's to tell? I'm fine. I couldn't be better. There you go. Anything else? Well, that depends. Depends on what? You're Billy. That's me. I hear you're a person who can uh, put his hands on things. I have a matter of personal honor to attend to. I need a handgun. That'll run you into some money. How much? 150. I'll have $200 for you, if you can get it for me while I wait. Somebody's in a hurry. You might say that. What sort of a piece have you got in mind? None of your lady's little pistols. I need a long barrel 38 or bigger. I need a deposit. There's 20. How long will it take? You got a couple hours? I've got nothing else to do. I'll wait right here. late for uh, parish calls, isn't it? I've just been <clears throat> visiting Delia. Oh. Well, how was she? Very upset. I'm worried about her. Father, you're, uh, you're Delia's confessor, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, if you have a minute, uh, I'd like to ask you about a couple of things. Of course. As long as you understand, I cannot comment on anything Delia told me, either in a confessional or in confidence. Yes, I am. Uh, I appreciate that. I, but I feel that I can consult you as a, a friend of Delia's and someone who's known her very well for a very long time. Very well, indeed. Father, I know that Delia had a miscarriage before she married Pat. She concealed it from him and then faked a miscarriage after they were married. And I also know that in an effort to focus Pat's attention on her and away from my own sister, she faked a nervous breakdown a few weeks ago. I know that because I helped her do it. Are you sure you want to tell me all this? Yes. Because I value your opinion. Father, I am not proud of helping Delia. And I think her little plan has had a very bad effect both on Pat and on herself. Well, I share your concern for both of them. Pat has been in very bad shape. But though I, I think he's coming out of it. I pray you're right. Father, I'm wondering that if Pat learned the truth, the entire truth, if it would help him. Well, I can't comment on that. I'm on the side of truth. And I think it would help Delia as well. I mean, she is so caught up in the, the cobweb of, of lies that she's weaving. I, 
I can't believe that she would be incredibly relieved to just get rid of the whole thing. What you're about to ask me is, if I think Pat will leave Delia when he learns the truth, and what I feel my reaction would her, what I feel her reaction will be, if he does leave her. My question's precisely. In answer to your first question, yes. It's very likely Pat will leave Delia. Any basis for a relationship between them, I'm afraid, would be destroyed. And if he left her? I think you are in an unenviable position. Uh, how's that? Delia is so disturbed, her emotional reaction so exaggerated, even for Delia, that I think she's close to the breaking point right now. You think she would have a real breakdown? Yes, I do. That's the one thing that's stopping me. The thought of being responsible. Yes. Roger, I cannot counsel you. Obviously, I'm distressed at the possible consequences if you tell Pat what Delia's done. And yet, how can I suggest you go on collaborating with her lie? I was hoping for a little more guidance than that, Father. I'm sorry if I disappoint you. I would not want to have the responsibility you bear in this matter. Now, you must excuse me. Good night, Roger. Good night, Father. much she's changed. Oh, she's a champion grower, too. Champion everything, right? Right. <laughs> you know, the only thing that worries me about this apartment is uh, the balcony. Oh, well, those doors are, n are never opened until spring. Yeah, and come spring, we'll have the sturdiest gate you ever saw. <laughs> when old Fuss and Fred here thought about Ryan crawling out on the balcony, and announced we're going to have to move. Yeah, well, old Fuss and Fred <laughs> says we still may have to move, because I don't like to take chances. Uh -huh. See what I mean? It never occurred to me there was something behind those doors. You might have had a look. Oh, we have a glorious view of the docks to remind Jack where he came from. And we can also see the lights from New Jersey. Faith, uh, you mind I ask you a professional question? You mean without my sending you a bill? Sure. I just didn't want to impose, that's all. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, okay. I was in the supermarket today. Yeah? Ryan was with me, right? And suddenly... This strange lady starts lecturing me on, on what a terrible thing I'm doing to the baby. Letting her have a pacifier. <clears throat> well, I hope you told her that it was none of her business. Well, she seemed so concerned about the, the baby, I, I just listen. Do you want some real professional advice? Uh-huh. Don't listen to anyone. Repeat anyone except Maeve, Mary, and me. Huh. Okay. Among the three of us, we will get you through. <laughs> I was just trying to get some information, Faith. Okay, okay. Actually, arguing about pacifiers, yes or no, is kind of like arguing about how many angels can stand on the head of a pin. It's a matter of personal opinion. And my position is, if a baby is happy without a pacifier, why give her one? On the other hand, if she's fussy and a pacifier calms her down, why take it away? Oh. Huh. You know, uh, there aren't too many fathers who uh, care whether their baby has a pacifier or not. In fact, uh, there aren't too many fathers who take the baby to the supermarket. Well, I uh, figure I'm pretty lucky. Be over 30 and a new father and be able to work at home. On both counts. Also, I, uh, I've been around long enough, so I appreciate the baby. And I've had my share of parties and late nights, so I don't mind staying home with her. You'd be surprised what good company she can be. I wouldn't be surprised if you turned out to be the champion father of the year. You know what I used to think would be the greatest thing to ever happen to me? Win the Pulitzer Prize for journalism. 
You know what's the greatest thing that ever happened to me? Mary, Ryan. I guessed. Oh. oh, it's so beautiful out there. Oh, it really is. That view? Uh, only it's also freezing. <laughs> Any coffee? Yes. Yep, yep. hot, Here. just ready to be poured. Terrific. Isn't it wonderful? The four of us together. Doesn't it make you feel grateful to be alive? Mm hmm Living. I like it. Mm hmm Me too. This thing will drop a charging elephant. If you can hit him with it, it's a bit battered. You didn't say you wanted it new. You said long barrel and big bore, and that's what you've got. I guess it'll do. Any complaints, you can always bring it back. If it'll stop an elephant, it'll do the trick for me. Spend breakfast in bed with SoapNet. Sleep in, curl up, and check out with back-to-back -back episodes of One Tree Hill and Beverly Hills 90210. Breakfast in bed, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday on SoapNet.